Transfigured on the Mount, O Christ our God. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Be Transfigured, where we invite you to live a new life in Christ. We pray that this episode is a blessing to you and will inspire you to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. We invite you to join us for worship or study at the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral in Tarpon Springs, Florida, where visitors are always welcome. We'll be back in a few moments to share some more information about our ministry. I'm not sure how many of you were here last week, but it was a full house. We brought chairs in and still people were standing. There were so many people we were wondering how many more we could fit in. And it was a beautiful sight to see our church filled to capacity. And as I was reflecting on the gospel reading for this particular Sunday this morning, it made me think of last week. Because if someone had come a little late to church last week, they would have seen, oh my gosh, I can't even get in, the church is so full. And still, we were able to make room for more people. And that is that wonderful joy that the church has. As I wrote in the bulletin this morning, there's always room for one more. When it comes to being the church of God, when it comes to welcoming people that need God in their life, there's always room for one more. And here we are in the middle of our Great Lenten journey. We have just completed the second week of the fast. And the church brings us this wonderful gospel story that is such an important reflection about our own life. Because it says that Christ was at the house and he was teaching and that there were so many people that came to listen to him, no one could get in, even through the front door. And Christ was preaching and teaching and so many people were interested in hearing his word. So many people indeed that there were four people outside who had a friend who was paralyzed. And they said to themselves, we have to get our friend to come see Jesus. And we are not going to wait another day. Today is the day they must have thought to themselves. And lo and behold, they get to the house, they can't get in. Many of us, and this is a, a reality of life, many of us think, well, there's no place to sit, I'll go home. Not these four. These four were so strong in their faith for Christ. They wanted so badly for their friend to see Jesus to be healed. They climbed up onto the roof. Now, don't tell the parish council this because I don't want this to happen to our cathedral. They climbed up onto the roof. They tore a hole in the roof. And they lowered their friend right in front of Jesus Christ. And Jesus turns to him and he says, it says in the scriptures, seeing their faith, seeing the faith of the friends, Christ says, your sins are forgiven you. At that moment, my brothers and sisters, that crowd had a choice to make like we have a choice to make. At that moment, the crowd had a choice to say, are we on God's side or are we on our own side? Whose side are we on, my brothers and sisters? The crowd wanted and had God's attention. All of a sudden, Christ is, his attention is brought to this man and now he's not paying attention to the crowd and the crowd gets upset. Who is this man to say your sins are forgiven you? Who is this man who speaks blasphemy, the crowd is saying? They're getting visibly angry. What is our response when a new person comes into our church? 
What is our response when the priest's attention has to be taken a little bit by someone new? What is our response when we're already sitting there in the church enjoying the, the liturgy and some stranger has to come in and take attention away from us? How many times do we find ourselves saying, they have their church, or sometimes I hear this, well, they have their liturgy, why are they coming to our liturgy? You know, because we have a two liturgy system here at the cathedral. And we get very protective about our relationship with Jesus Christ. We get very protective about what we think God and the church should be doing. And whenever someone comes in and maybe changes those things a little bit, our feathers get a little ruffled. I want to remind you of the past several weeks that the church has been preparing us for these gospel lessons. Remember the parable of the prodigal son. It was the loyal son who stayed home, the loyal son who obeyed all the rules, the loyal son who never left the father's side. He was the one who was in hell that day. My brothers and sisters, there are so many opportunities for us to realize that if we focus and we demand that everything revolve around us, then God's work will not be accomplished on the earth. And so Jesus, knowing this, says to them, which is harder, to say your sins are forgiven or to say pick up your bed and walk? And the scriptures say, so that they knew the power, then he says, which is easier to say to the paralytic. He turns to the man, he says, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately the man arose, he took up the bed and went out in the presence of them all. The entire crowd was face to face, face to face with God's power to forgive sins, and the power to heal us. And now it's our turn, my brothers and sisters. It's our turn to go and bring our friends to church. This gospel lesson reminds us that there are many still outside the doors of our cathedral that need God. They need His peace. They need his physical healing. They need his spiritual healing. And we all have sins that we need to be forgiven. This morning's gospel lesson, my brothers and sisters, is a call for us to go out and to bring our friends to the church. And don't worry how many seats are left because there's always going to be room for one more. We're going to hear over the weeks of this amazing power of God. But God's power, my brothers and sisters, will only benefit us if we get past our own sinfulness, in our own ego, in our own priorities. What did we hear weeks ago? Metanoite, repent, change the way you look at the world. The world is filled with pain and suffering. All of us have friends and family that need God. And yet, you can look around and see empty chairs. Our work is not yet finished. We must go and bring people to Christ. Not because we're going to earn some kind of credit board in heaven. Oh, Father Athanasius brought three more. One, two, three. No. Because we love our friends and our family. And we 
know where the healing is. Way back in the Old Testament, God made a promise to his people. If you need me, come, I will be there. And it says in Exodus, the presence of God was there among the people in the temple. Just as the presence of Christ was with these people and this crowd and this paralyzed man, my brothers and sisters, the presence of God is with us today. Sometimes we seem to forget that on the altar table is the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that in this church we are gathered to listen to God and to be forgiven of our sins and to be healed of our sicknesses in our sins. This is that great opportunity that Great Lent affords us. So my challenge for you this week, my brothers and sisters, as I have been saying over the weeks, do a little something more this week in your spiritual journey. Come to one additional service. Read one more scripture passage. Just do a little bit more. But this week specifically, I want you to reach out and invite a friend to church. Invite a friend that you know needs God. Or invite a family member who has strayed away from the church. Come on, we're going to church tonight. Why don't you come with me? And then be prepared to see the power of God in action in people's lives. As the gospel lesson finished today and the crowd sees this man walking and he hears, the crowd sees and hears God and they say, we never saw anything like this. My brothers and sisters, God is waiting for us. but we have to get past ourselves and bring our friends and to make room in our church for others. That is our challenge this week. Glory to God for all things. As far as they could bear it. Be Transfigured is a production of Be Transfigured Ministries in cooperation with the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Cathedral in Tarpon Springs, Florida. We depend upon your generosity to maintain our ministry. You can make a safe online donation when you visit our website, liveanewlifeinchrist.org.